The stories that's dominated the news over the past couple of days, of course, has been that terrible terrorist attack in Reading in a park on Saturday afternoon, early evening. Uh, three men stabbed to death uh, by this ranting, raving, absolute and utter maniac who turns out to be an asylum seeker from Libya. But not only is he an asylum seeker for Libya who hasn't yet been charged with any crime, he has been arrested under the Terrorism Act. But what we learned today, or what we learned late yes, yesterday, uh, was that he was on an MI5 terrorist watch list, which includes... 43,000 other people. Now, call me old-fashioned, but if you've got 43,000 people who are on a terrorist watch list, there's a pretty good chance that 10 of them, or maybe 20 of them, or maybe 100 of them, are going to commit some kind of atrocity. Surely we must be able to get rid of some of these people back to the countries from which they came. And Priti Patel has said that she is going to step up deportations. I was listening to Dan Wooden's show yesterday. He had a lawyer on who said there's absolutely nothing in the rules of engagement, including the Human Rights Act, that prevents this government from changing the way that they treat these people people. Let's talk to Di Davis, former head of Royal Protection, a man that knows a thing or two about policing, a former police officer, of course, himself. Di, very good morning to you. Welcome. Yes, good morning to you. I agree with you. It's absolutely scandalous uh, and very, very worrying. Uh, although we have known this for some time, I have to tell you. Yes, well, we've known that there have been people on watch lists. I mean, I was under the impression, whenever I was listening to uh, senior police figures con conversing about this, that at any given time they would be investigating something like 500 cases, which is probably quite a large number, but somehow manageable. But to say that there are more than 43,000 now people who are on an MI5 watch list is an extraordinary number, isn't it? It is an extraordinary number, but uh, ever so, I'm afraid to say. You know, we've had this kind of number for years, and I've been, I've been calling this out every time I get an opportunity. I mean, the, the, the strain on the security services and, indeed, the police is immense. Yes. And, of course, uh, they have to apportion, you know, uh, their resources as they, they can with the resources they have. You know, just to follow one man or woman... Uh, takes up to 10, 12 officers. Mm. Uh, and if you multiply that doing an average working day of 12 hours, it's a huge amount. And again, uh, unfortunately, every time we catch them, some big mouth tells in the press and media, tells the world how we're doing it. And of course, quite often you rely on informants and then cases can't proceed. But you're absolutely right. We've got to review. Uh, we're so soft sometimes in this country, aren't we, in my opinion? And we've got to, as you say, look again at why we're harbouring so many people. Mm. And surely we should be trawling through that 40,000 and see under this Human Rights Act uh, and everything else, who are, can we chuck out? But, you know... We hardly chuck anybody out. You get in here and you're in for a long time. Well, that's the sure. that is the trouble, isn't it, Di? I mean, one of the things that I was led to believe as well is that if you remember back to that Streatham attack where the guy sort of pulled a knife and ran into a shop and tried to stab a few people, luckily not without uh, not with much success, the reason that he wasn't able to hurt more people was that he was actually being tailed even at the time that he was trying to make the attack happen by the police. Now, um, I'm told that the police have got such short numbers now at the moment that a lot of that surveillance is not possible to do. Well, you're probably quite right. And, of course, it's not just terrorists they're having to watch. Uh, they're trying to catch major criminals, cr uh, drug dealers. Mm. You know, the, the level below surface in this society now is just frightening in terms of organised crime, uh, paedophiles. The, 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 the sheer stretching of police forces across this country. And I think we really got to look again. How are we policing and I think we're all for inquiries. Well, we ought to have an inquiry why we still want 43 police forces. Can we not amalgamate some and make them more efficient and put the money we save from getting rid of half the senior officers in these constabularies and other places and amalgamating, as they've done in Scotland? And here in Wales, we've got four uh, police forces, some bigger than others. But surely, you know, there are still 10, 12 ranks in the police. There are so many efficiency aspects you could do, which you could then translate back into frontline policing. And I've been saying that for many years. Yes. I mean, presuming that we could actually make sure that many of these people uh, are not need necessarily put under surveillance, but are actually removed from the country, you know, that would lift a huge burden, would it not, from not only the police, but also from MI5? Well, I think you're right, and I think uh, the Home Secretary and those who advise her should be actually doing this. And again, we really got to get a grip in this country on how we tackle 
uh, both terrorists or potential terrorists and indeed criminals. You know, even you commit rape and all the rest of it, if you've got human rights, then you stay in this country. And if you fathered half a dozen kids, as some of these people do, spread all over the country, you can say, well, I'm the father. Well, with great respect, I, I'd be kicking you out too. Uh, yeah, quite. And I mean, obviously, with uh, uh, the kind of attack that happened on... Um uh, on Saturday afternoon or evening, early evening in Reading. There's not an awful lot the police can do about that. I mean, it was a very brave police officer uh, who managed to rugby tackle the guy to the ground, who was unarmed, by the way, uh, but showed why we need the police in this country rather than uh, to defund them or any other kind of crazy idea that some people may have. But, um, you know, uh, it's quite difficult, is it not? And Priti Patel's kind of made this point that there seems to be an increase in the number of these lone actors, as she now calls them, rather than lone wolves. Um, you can't really stop somebody walking into a park with a knife, can you? No, and the other factor is is, is we've imported a lot of people who are mentally ill. And it's a fine a, a line. I would think half of these people who purport to be terrorists, frankly, are mentally ill anyway. Yeah. Because anyone who does this kind of act has got to be insane in one shape or another. Right. So there's, there's the other dilemma. We don't have the mental health resources that we used to have. And again, because we've allowed so many different elements from all parts of the world with different standards of care and all the rest mm. of it, we, we, we have them, unfortunately, now. We're 66 million. But again, please stop having these huge demonstrations uh, so allow uh, coppers to get on and do coppering instead of walking along with people, I don't know, doing the kind of things we've seen lately. It, it just takes resources away from policemen and women doing the job we really want them to do. Yes. Isn't it interesting as well that some of these demonstrators, while attacking the police at one end of it, uh, are actually going to the police for protection at the other end of it? Um, it's a rather bizarre situation. Well, it is bizarre, and as I've said before on your programme and others, you know, we're very selective about we, what we protest about in this country. We're not protesting about the violence in Hong Kong, no. Chinese or the Russia, or, or, or inside, you know, I was thinking that this morning, you know, how many thousands have died uh, in civil wars fairly recent years? And do we have protests against the Dats and all the rest of them? No, we don't. Because one black person gets killed in America, we go berserk. Mm. Well, I just don't understand the logic. Yes, it's awful. Yes, it shouldn't happen. But, you know, we are mad, as I've said on your Well, I think, as, uh, yeah, and I, as I've said many well, times... some people mad. ...as well, Di. I mean, you know, I'm all for people having uh, the right to protest. That's all fine and dandy. But not in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic and certainly not in a way which leads to violence, which leads to police officers getting hurt. I mean, one police officer, of course, did end up in hospital uh, with a collapsed lung uh, with many very serious injuries after she was knocked off her horse. You know, there is absolutely no excuse for that, in my view. Well, there isn't any excuse. And I really, I, I do think also the calibre of leadership, as I, I read a letter in the Daily Mail uh, last week uh, yeah. saying how sad I am. Mm. And you said to me once, don't be sad, I get angry. Well, yes. I was angry. Yeah, good. And I got angry with Assistant Commissioner Basu and his mm. failure, if you like, to actually uh, worry or concern himself in his open letter about the officers that were injured. And mm. I think to myself, this is the man in charge of our anti-terrorists. And I said, I'm angry now. And uh, you got me angry, I'm afraid, and you quite rightly said to me, Di, get angry. Well, yes. I'm angry now. I'm angry at the lack of leadership in many of these constabularies when people get down on their knees remembering a criminal. And mm. again, we've elevated a serial criminal now into some kind of hero. As I say, I think the world is mad. Yes, no, I don't think I can argue with any single word of what you've just said, Di. Thank you very much indeed. A very sensible man, uh, as per everybody else who talks to me on this show, apart from that bloke that rang up in the first instance, he wasn't very sensible at all. But, you know, the point is this. Surely, Di uh, should have his uh, opinion heard. He should have his uh, way of, uh, of of explaining why the police is failing heard, because the, the police are the people who are still in the front line. I mean, incredibly... The people who run Black Lives Matter, for example, would like to do away with the police. We spoke to Gary McFarlane, one of the organisers of the uh, of the group, and he was quite open about saying that he wanted to defund the police and he wanted the police to disappear from communities and he wanted to have the communities police themselves with the money that the police would otherwise be getting. It's a kind of crazy world uh, that they would like to create. And it's certainly not something that I think the bulk of people in this country would want to create. You can be in favour of what their cause is, but in terms of the means that they want to use to get to that cause, I think you would very much disagree with it because I don't think it is in any way democratic and it is certainly not what this country stands for. 